Solutions for living at home can assist with an aging parent during respite care, recovery from a surgery or chronic illness, or provide a helping hand with simple chores and responsibilities. We're available 24-7 on a long-term or limited basis. We understand each client's needs are different. Our highly trained staff work closely with you, your family, and your healthcare providers to develop and deliver a plan that is just right for your circumstances. Solutions for Living at Home is a nationally ranked home care provider rated among the best in the nation based on client and caregiver satisfaction. With our experience and dedication, you can trust Solutions for Living at Home to provide exceptional service. We listen, we plan, and we care. Visit solutionsforlivingathome.org or call 803-223-6173. My kids loved playing with Legos and actually still do well into adulthood. That simple toy was a genius creation by someone who simply expanded on the concept of building blocks. Today, we're going to be talking about another genius product created especially for people with dementia. Hi, I'm Anna Gelbman Edmonds, the host of Navigating in Reverse and the publisher of the online magazine Reverse. Both are aimed at adult children who are caring for their aging parents, which often feels like a role reversal when you're parenting your parents. I'm excited about today's interview because we're tackling a topic I know very little about, and that's dementia, or at least one aspect of dementia. It turns out that some of our best episodes are the ones I'm the least educated about, so hopefully this will be one of those. My guest today stumbled upon something that made a huge difference in her caregiving role and in her mother's life. So if you're caring for someone with dementia, listen up, because it may make a huge difference in yours. Angela Fairhurst, welcome to Navigating in Reverse. Thanks for having me today, Anna. It's such a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. We've talked a couple times before this, so I know where we're going with this. Um, I love what you're doing and what you created. But I want to lead into our conversation by you sharing the part of your caregiving story that led to your entrepreneurial journey. So I'll, I'll just tell listeners that you're out of California. It's not like we're buddies or anything. We met online somehow. I don't even remember how. And then when we got in touch, you told me this crazy story, which is what? Go ahead. Well, um, I'm a television producer basically, here in Los Angeles, born and raised native Californian. And my mother was misdiagnosed with Alzheimer's when she actually had Lewy body dementia. And Lewy body dementia is pretty different from Alzheimer's. You, they do suffer from hallucinations, but unlike Lewy body, I mean, unlike Alzheimer's, Lewy body dementia, you cannot give antipsychotic drugs to some, a Lewy body patient. When you do, they have severe bad reactions. And that's kind of what happened to my mom. So early signs of Lewy body dementia are where their blood pressure drops. And she had a pacemaker put in. And this, when a Lewy body patient or any dementia patient actually has anesthesia, you see their dementia. It comes out like crazy. And my mom had no idea where she was. Um, and so it was seven hospitalizations and near-death experiences. And my mom was after four years of her uh, misdiagnosis, was finally properly diagnosed. And then she went into another care home and she's having trouble communicating properly. She is struggling. She's biting. She's kicking. She's just, you know, just out of her mind. And we're so worried. She needed 36 hours care in 24 hours. It was really, really difficult. And because she needed so much care, I was panicked. I just didn't know what to do. And then I saw her tearing on a magazine and, and in her fingers, pulling on the paper. And I saw this deep sensory need. And I knew that it was lack of communication that was trying to get out. It was something that was causing this behavior. It wasn't just that she was angry. It was just that she couldn't communicate her needs. That's when I started to bring her items for sensory this deep sensory need emerged. And that's the birth of Jerry Gadgets. Okay. So Jerry Gadgets, this is the thing that you created. So talk 
and, and, and it's, a, it's a product that helps people with sensory perception. So I want you to talk about how you, how you came about this and what Jerry Gadgets actually is. Jerry Gadgets are sensory products. I have uh, three of them. I have three, and they're, they're buckets. So my first, I'll, I'll just give you to the birth of the products because the first thing I did was when I saw her sensory need, I started to bring toys, actually, literally from the toy store because there wasn't anything available out there in the marketplace that I could find that was available for my mom. There were either too complicated or they weren't appropriate things at all. I mean, literally, I brought a bucket, uh, the kind uh, that had shapes, that the ones that they put those shapes into the fit into the holes and they were hard shapes, but she had a clenched hand. She couldn't get a shape into the hole. It was frustrating for her, but she liked looking into the bucket. So that was the idea of a bucket. Now my products have buckets, right? So then I was like, oh, that's interesting. So then I started bringing household items. I went to a fabric store. I got pieces of fabric. Well, that wasn't a good idea because they get dirty and they get matted up and it just wasn't sanitary. But when I got a pot holder from home and I cut it into a proper size and fit, it was the magic bullet for me. We could throw it back and forth. But it was a silicone pot holder, isn't that? I mean, that's, that's the right. important part. It wasn't a fabric one or a metal exactly. trivet. It was silicone. It was a silicone <laughs> pot holder. So silicone was magical because it had a crunch sound like when folded like a taco. It was something we could throw back and forth. It was something that was... You has is something that could go in the mouth safely. It could be washable. And so that's when the idea of a silicone product and silicone bucket and all of these things came to pass where, okay, Jerry Gadgets can are working like magic and they have to be washable. They have to be indestructible right. and they have to be fitted and properly sized for somebody to handle. You know, regular pot holders are way too big. That's not something you could just bring. Right. I mean, you know, they have to be sizable to fit properly for the hands. And so that's when I started to first bucket was a fidget bucket. So I have five manipulatives and they're all properly sized and they're all made especially for people with dementia. So they're malleable and they're tested and they're non-toxic. So when you look out there, there are fidget toys that you can get, but a lot of them have gooey insides or pieces that pull off. Nothing is like that in Jerry Gadgets. So we have a tugger that has is actually handmade. There's somebody sitting there making these by hand. This isn't a machine made product. Mm. This is a handmade product that's our, that, that are straws and elastic that they pull. So they're exercising, a person is exercising their hands and arms. And so this is a single or multi-user. So I could pull on a tugger with my mom and she could exercise so I could engage with her sensory or she could do it on her own right and then that was one item there's a um a, a, an egg and the egg is so familiar but it was great for her hand that clenched hand i could get it in there and this is something she could bite on but it wouldn't create a tooth mark right nothing like there's a um a click chain there are something similar in the market but they come apart that's a small part thing and they're of, of neon paint well that's toxic Okay. And that's also dangerous. Those small parts could, are extremely sure, dangerous. Sure. Well, in our case, we're, we, we, we had it engineered so that the parts aren't going to fall apart. And the sound of this click chain is, is interesting. So it's now louder and it can sound like cracking ice or walking on leaves in the, in the fall. And so the memory is stimulating something too. So it's not just a safe product that they can mouth. It's something that they're clicking on and, you know, again, exercising their hands and arms and they have sensory, you know, stimulation, cognitive exercise, calming effect. And this promoted this mental stimulation. My mom's behavior problems went away. And the fifth item in the um, in the um, fidget fidget bucket is a it's a popper, but it's called a therapad. And it's an unusual size and it's specially fit for us. It's a triangle Mm -hmm. and that it fits in the hand just perfectly. So it also works as a therapeutic, you know, item to strengthen the hand as well. 
the exercise through the arms, as well as being a popper that we're familiar with, but it's not a cheap drugstore one, they can mouth this as well. So the poppers, I know my grandson had one. They're these little things that you pop in and out, right? It's like a little Mm -hmm. thing that fits in your hand and it makes a little clicking noise and it fits on a key ring or something like that. And I think kids in school, kids with ADHD or, you know, kids that are, have a hard time concentrating, they're these fidget things. So my one question I have about the Jerry gadgets that you have are are all the the pieces because they come in a bucket? There's a you sell sets mm-hmm. of these gadgets that all work together. Right. Are some of the pieces a different texture? Like I know I have a silicon um, pot holder, and one side of it has like raised bumps, and it really um, holds the pot down differently on the counter than the flat side. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the shapes bucket. So so the fidget bucket that we just talked about is great for all anybody that does fidget stuff. So your kids could play with it too. Right. Um, And that has five different, you know, the five different shapes that we were talking about. But they all have the same texture, all five shapes. No, those have, those are five different textures. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Okay. So that's, you're you're correct in that. So those are completely different. And those are, you know, so that's five different things, a, a variety pack, if you will. The shapes bucket that you were talking about how Lego was invented. Right. Well, I was inspired by Lego and Tetris for the shapes bucket. Okay. And the shapes bucket has a, a, a side with stars on the top. And on the other side, it's smooth surface. So it doesn't matter which side you you play with. Um, the There are 10 multicolored pieces, you know, five different kinds of shapes to each. And they are Tetris, side, uh, Tetris shapes. And they're really fun to play with. They could be laying down. They could be stood up. There are endless possibilities with how you put them together. They can build a structure. Mm -hmm. If they are earlier stage, they can certainly do more complicated things using the bucket to create the structure on top of or within or around. If they are more further along with the dementia, they can lay them flat. doesn't matter Mm -hmm. if they fall down. That's part of the play, but the great thing is is that the container if somebody with dementia it's often seen that it limits possibilities that the condition is you know really just somebody's got dementia now we need to put them aside right right they're still adults right Mm -hmm. they're and we don't really know what the capacities are but they can they are there they're still there they just can't do exactly what they could do but that doesn't mean that somebody with dementia can't experience joy and engagement is like a flower that just comes to life. It's really beautiful seeing them become alert by 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 things like this. So by levering creativity and engagement and this kind of innovation, we can redefine how dementia is perceived and we can manage this and give them quality of life. And my mom really stayed busy for three hours at a time. Wow. My mom was an ideal candidate for Jerry Gadgets. Some people We'll keep them busy for 15 minutes on one day. Some people for an hour, some people for 10 minutes, some people like my mom for three hours at a time, but whatever it is, any sense of engagement is more than they usually have. The average person in a home, for example, in, of engagement, according to the CCD, CDC is only 11 minutes a day. Well, I think it's no different than with children when you give them a toy. Some kids will sit there and play with Legos for hours or Hot Wheels cars or whatever, and another kid is going to needs to run around and jump and and isn't fascinated by these things that we concentrate closely on. So, I can see where each dementia patient is very different and would uh, benefit from different tools. Yeah, the power of in- love and innovation and and this is just makes a big difference in in encouraging, you know, caregivers can have a break with this and I certainly did and I went from crying after I saw my mom to bringing a smile right to her and that was the you know, game changer really. I think Jerry Gadgets is amazing because it's so portable. You can take it wherever you're going. I think that, I mean, it comes in a little bucket, like, literally like a sand bucket that you would take yeah. to the beach. But there's things like, I remember I would give my mom the job every spring and fall to fill the potted plant, the, the planters. I would give her the pots 
and the little things that you buy from Lowe's or wherever, Walmart, the garden center. And and that was enough for her to be digging in the dirt and planting the little Mm -hmm. place. She could get her hands dirty and wet. There was a shovel. And so I didn't care if she planted them right or wrong. You know what I mean? She loved to garden and she, that was her ability. That was the way she could garden. So I I just want to talk, I want listeners to be thinking that if you're, if your parent is in a senior living uh, facility of some kind, you have a recreation director and these Jerry gadgets and other things can be made available either to you personally or to that director, right? I mean, it seems to me that every senior living facility who takes in dementia, people with dementia, whether it's a memory care facility or otherwise, should have something like this. I mean, they all have jigsaw puzzles sitting around and they do, yeah. what is it? Bingo, which my mother hated. She liked Jeopardy better and could do it till the day she died. She was good at it. But why shouldn't yeah. every facility have some Jerry gadgets or other things like that? Just What do you say about that? You know, just a set of Jerry gadgets. And then we, we didn't even talk about the flower bucket, which, you know, when they have, a, everybody loves flowers right. and that one's so popular. So why wouldn't you have flowers sitting there? They're beautiful just to see. So you have these colorful things. I know what the flower bucket is. Describe that for listeners. But the flower bucket has four tulips with silicone heads, bendable leaves that have no wire in them, and a, and a, and a silicone vase that comes in a yellow bucket. And that just is you know, that can, the flowers can go into one another. The bucket is reinforced. So it can go, you can do an arrangement the traditional way, but if somebody puts, feels like putting the stem in the side of the vase or the flower upside down or inside of each other or in the side of on the, you know, hitched to the side of the bucket or onto the side of the vase, again, that's creativity. Or if there's a live flower situation and they want to put a live flower with a silicone flower all that's okay but here here again the jigsaw puzzle you lose a piece you can't play right bingo card you lose pieces you can't play right any of the fidget gadget buckets you can and you can mouth all of these they're completely washable right. so that it you know that's a big safety issue especially since covid that everything is wipeable sanitizable in between users with a wipe and then certainly dishwasher safe and if they don't have a dishwasher you know obviously it's easy to clean. Right. So we have this, you know, great way to, but I think they should all be, they're wayfinding, you know, they're bright. So if somebody in a care home has them in the main rooms, it's a great way for somebody to visit with their loved sure. one. You don't have to answer, ask questions anymore. You just fidget. Yeah. We don't know that our loved ones have the answers to anything. They don't even know if they've eaten that day sometimes. Right. They don't necessarily know your name. Now you don't have to worry about that. It just changes the game. But I, I, and I saw all sorts of stages of dementia that, uh, you know, when I visit, you see early stage people in engaging with later stage people right. to help each other. It's such a beautiful thing. Okay. I have to tell you, I, I, I really know I'm doing the right thing by that. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to ask you to pause there because we have to stop and take a break for our sponsors. We'll come back and uh, revisit or take on something new for a couple minutes before we have to call it a day. And we will be right back. Are you a caregiver feeling overwhelmed by the challenges of supporting a loved one with dementia? The South Carolina Christian Action Council understands the importance of self-care for caregivers like you. We promote dialogue, social justice, peacemaking, and healing reconciliation. Because when caregivers care for themselves, they can better care for their loved ones. Join us in our mission of compassion and support. Contact the South Carolina Christian Action Council today at sechristianactioncouncil.org. Mom, I'm in a meeting. It's today? Okay, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Her mother's appointment was just moved up, so Amanda has to leave work again. If her mom had right at home, professional reliable caregivers could provide a ride to the doctor and other in-home care services. And Right at Home is an award-winning national company, so Amanda could have peace of mind, too. Visit TrustRAH.com and get the right care right at home. Okay, we're back with uh, Angela Fairhurst, and we are talking about 
a very specific aspect of people with uh, a behavior with people uh, who have dementia. And we're talking about sensory, a need for sensory uh, stimulation um, that a lot of them have. So what I wanted to ask you was, obviously you were frustrated by the behaviors and the people who were also caring for her on a bigger scale were also frustrated by her behaviors. But you somehow picked up on, like if I had seen your mom, you know, rustling paper or something, it wouldn't have occurred to me to invent something. How did you figure this out that it was a sensory issue? Because I think that's a bigger topic that we're not paying close enough attention to these behaviors and what's really behind them. Yeah, I see when you when you when somebody has dementia, they start losing. I mean, and it depends on the kind of dementia they have. Obviously, you know, they're going to lose their short term memory. But Lewy body dementia doesn't lose their short term memory as soon as Alzheimer's right. does. But it's the power of observation, right? You actually have to start paying attention when somebody doesn't want to go into the shower. It might be because their skin is hurting. When somebody is afraid of something, my mom got super paranoid. And that is also because she was forgetting where she put things. And then she would think somebody stole something. Right. And that's because she hidden it because she thought it would be in a safe place. And it, it becomes, so when you start to understand these things. And so I started to just just dig deeper and, you know, what is going on? Because, you know, knowing my mom, I was like, you know, just the powers of observation instead of, and so I, the, the, their acronym that you use is don't, right. Don't argue, react, respond, or, you know, or, or try and explain. And so it's not, don't, you know, because we are like, but don't you remember can't you remember? No, they can't, right. you know? And, and so we get frustrated and it's normal to get frustrated and it's normal to be impatient, but you know, it's about taking the step back and breathing and trying to understand that this is a progression of a disease that's not going to get better. Right. But what gets better is us understanding their lack of communication and trying to meet them where they are. Right. And so for some reason, I just, it was just, I guess, out of desperation, I just got, I dug in and I just started to watch her. And watch what her needs were. I don't really know. It's from the grace of God, honestly. I, I don't, I just saw that she was, had this need to communicate. It right. was just like, I learned to see, sense when she had a UTI. And I, and I was the only one that knew. I'm like, can we test her for that? And I was always right. Right. That UTI business is something most of us learn eventually through the, through the caregiving process. A UTI, a urinary tract infection, affects seniors very differently than it does someone like you or I. Um, I would feel yep. pain. I would feel like I got yep. a pee every two seconds and uh, like four drops come out, blah, blah. You know, most of us have had one. They feel nothing, but they start acting loopy. And if somebody yep. has dementia and a UTI, the loopiness is even crazier. Yeah. And so yeah. it took me a while because nobody tells you that. Nobody warns you about that. And that UTI nope. can get really bad if, if you don't get on. you got to get on antibiotics immediately. So that's to all you people out there. If your parent just starts acting kind of, or other loved ones, starts acting kind of loopy, check them for a UTI because it comes on really fast and hard. I know we get frustrated caring for seniors, especially when they have dementia. But if you pay close attention and you seek out wisdom from dementia specialists. And there's a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of books that will help you. I learned after my mother died, it was too late. I was one of those ones asking a lot of yes, no questions, or what did you have for dinner last night? She didn't know. She couldn't remember. She didn't know what she had for lunch that, you know, an hour ago, but she could talk about her childhood to the cows come home. If I would just pull out a photo album, she would talk for hours with me, but it takes a long time to learn those things, but you'll learn them faster. If you don't visit or spend time with them for your benefit, you're going there for their benefit and watch them and what they're doing. How's that? Right. And you also go to visit not because they're not going to remember you, right. right? They're not. That's not it. But you need to go because caregivers need to know that their loved ones care. Yes. So they'll keep caring too. Yes. And that, and that honestly, inside, deep inside, they know you're there. 
So uh, we're going to have to wrap it up. Our time is up, but I want to give you an opportunity to let listeners know how they can, what's the best way to find you? We'll have a link to your website in the show notes. So, yep. Please go to the website, www.jerrygadgets.com with G's. There's a dash, but if you don't have the dash in between, it's okay. It'll take you to the website anyway. That'll have information. It has Instagram. It has links to our YouTube, which has videos. It has links of where to buy. Currently, where to buy is at through SNS Worldwide. And make sure that you always, always, always use the coupon code at SNS. There you go. You can always reach me through my website as well. Okay. So you can always message me through the website. Well, thank you for all of that. I'm going to encourage readers, if your loved one with dementia, you think that they may uh, or may or may not, I think you should talk to the, the, uh, the, the, the some level of director or manager at the care where your parent is living and tell them about Jerry Gadgets. Even if your parent doesn't need them, there's somebody that lives in there that needs something like that. And there's other products out in the market. I mean, you can Google dementia products or something like that. And all these crazy things pop up. But this one I thought was so cool. It was very different. And um, I just wanted to tell everybody about it. So, Angela, thank you yep. very much for being here with us. We'll, uh, we wish you the best of luck selling your product. Um, I know it's hard to get something out there, but um, maybe one day we'll talk about Jerry Gadgets the way we do Legos. You never know. <laughs> I hope so. Well, we're washable. We're durable. So we're sustainable. We're going to be there for a while, I hope. Thanks, Anna, for your time. Well, thank you for being here. And listeners, um, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, we always love when you share the episodes with your friends, family, and colleagues. And we will be back in two weeks with a new episode. And in the meantime, thank you for sharing and thank you for caring. The Reverse Podcast is written and produced by the F Suite LLC, all rights reserved. Our audio engineer is Andrew Hayworth. Thank you for listening. Thank you.